Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here with Jen from Tested. And we have a really cool project that Jen's been working on that we can finally reveal. Uh, for the past couple of months or so, Jen, you have been prototyping and designing something that uh, your take on a book nook, something we've seen kind of go viral on places like Reddit and social media. Uh, what is a book nook? Uh, it's basically a narrow diorama that fits into a bookshelf. So it's meant to have books on both sides, and then there's this little space or this little world that sits in between them that you can kind of look into. And it's, it kind of taps into all these things that we're super into. Miniatures, yeah. it's kind of hidden world aspect, and makes use of tools that we have here in the shop, like laser cutter and also foam core fabrication, mm -hmm. uh, which is what you started off with here. So this is your prototype. You knew that you wanted to design something that would maybe have the illusion of book spines on the side, um, and then you decided on a form factor that would fit into something like an IKEA bookshelf. Yep, yeah. I basically started off with foam core to test out the sizing and the scale of everything. Mm -hmm. So I put it into my bookshelf and I figured out what's a good average book size, uh, what's the width, like what's a good spacing for your diorama to exist in. Um, and then I also figured out that I wanted on both sides, I wanted the ability to add uh, an external sort of lighting panel. Because one of the things I think about this particular diorama shape is it gives it more uh, depth if it looks like it's lit from beyond, beyond the space of the diorama. So you can look into this little scene, but coming from both sides, it looks like the world expands beyond that. Right, you get very dramatic shadows. Mm -hmm. I see in here you've kind of carved in some windows, you're getting shadows cast in there, uh, and you're also making great use of that negative space behind your, your fake books, of course. This is super cool. It gives a great insight into your kind of like tangible prototyping process yeah. way before you are gonna do some computer design, some CAD work, um, and, and you're actually building like little bay windows in here. Yeah, yeah, I made it, I don't know if you can see that. I made a little, uh, yeah, surface detail that attaches on the front. And then the other thing that's important for me about this step of the process is lots of um, sort of note taking and figuring out what design uh, I want to go with. So you'll see, I, I actually just make notes to myself right on, on the sides of the panels and uh, indicated where I was going to put in different features so that when I take it to the digital format, I know what I've solved for in physical space first. Mm -hmm. And something here I've noticed, it's like glued pieces, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not how you want your final product to be. I also see you've carved in, carved in channels where you can imagine having pieces slide into each other. What are you doing to design in your head at this point how it's going to come apart and come together when it's not foam core, when it's wood? Uh, well, definitely thinking about material thickness and then also knowing how all the joints are going to work. So I had in mind laser cutting. A lot of times people use those finger joints um, that slot together really well. And as long as your tolerances are nice and tight, it can almost hold together without glue. Uh, so I was thinking about how it would be manufactured later. So the foam core is actually not that different than the material thickness of the, the plywood that we were using. Um, so I, I tested a little bit of it here. But then from this, I went into the design software and I created my first uh, my first version of, of this in plywood. And this is super cool. So this is the very ugly first attempt. So I took, the, I took this, put it into Illustrator. So Adobe Illustrator is kind of my, my go-to. I will say I'm sure there are easier programs to, to 3D model something like this that would account for material thickness and tabs. Uh, but I'm really familiar with Illustrator. And because laser cutting is, is a 2D or 2.5D format, um, just doing the work as vectors was, was easy to start with. Uh, so as I start the process of laser cutting, obviously there's a lot of iteration. What seems like it'll work in two-dimensional space on a screen doesn't necessarily manifest itself exactly the same way in three dimensions. So my process was to cut a piece, and then as it would come out of the laser cutter, I would figure out, okay, actually these two tabs are off by the eighth of an inch, or this needs to move. So you can see I, as the pieces would come out, I would fit them together, test fit, and then take notes. So I, I was giving myself pretty extensive like design guidelines of how to do it better. So then I'd go back to the computer, make my edits. So this is this is my my first version. Um, and it's really a brute force process because it's not automated in the sense where you change the length of one piece, it automatically adjusts the size of the tabs to another piece. You are actually you know, color coding your edges, so then you know that edge is gonna conform to that edge and everything does need to line up. 
Yeah, and along those lines, I one of the things I realized as I was doing it is once all the pieces come out of the laser cutter, a lot of them look similar. Mm. So I, even though I designed it, I was like, wait, how did how did these two fit together? So I actually came up with this really simple uh, symbol system. So if you look at these here, uh, there's like a there's like a plus sign, there's a circle, there's a square, and there's a triangle. Um, what that does is so I then know, okay, these two pieces are going to fit together because it's square to square. Um, and I just built that into all of the pieces. So every piece is coded with the sides that match together. Yeah, registration indicators, because you're essentially designing something that's going to be reproducible because it's like a kit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and one of the things I saw with some of the book nooks people had made is they're really beautiful, but it's a, it's a very prescriptive model. Like you're mm -hmm. building this particular alleyway or this particular scene. So what I was trying to do is find a way that this could be replicatable as a, as a base kit, as sort of a blank slate. So to get the, the form factor dialed in perfectly so people could then take that and iterate on it how they wanted to. And that blank slate is the next prototype that you have. Yeah, so the final form factor that I ended up with is this. So this is all finished, dialed in, the edges are all flush, everything fits together really nicely, it's a nice press fit. Uh, I even added these uh, half round uh, molding to the front so it looks like book spines. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see you have integrated switches in here, and even just looking at a comparison between this prototype and here, you could reduce the number of tabs because you knew you could have structurally sound elements with those slots. Exactly, and I wanted them to be a little bit less, uh, less more decorative, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that I did with this one, um, you'll see, you know, as the iterations change, is I, I tried a couple different mechanisms of attachment. So, like first, I tried magnets. So there's uh, some little earth magnets in there to get pieces to line up. Uh, and then I ended up with this purely mechanical version, which is basically just keyed, and then they slot on together. And how are you getting the, this stump in place? Is that just an outline that you then glue a stump on? Yeah, so th they say keep on them because these are the cutouts from this Oh piece. my gosh, that's, of course, it makes so much sense. Uh, and as yes. you're, all the pieces <laughs> that fall out, normally you just toss yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Don't forget, these ones, hold on to those. Perfect. Um, so there's a couple things that I that I finalized for this, this version. So one of those things is that there's access panels on the sides that you can get to the electronics. So you could have your battery pack, um, there's holes so you can wire your lights in through the center. Um, and then actually the entire structure will separate. This I thought was a really important part because you want to not only create what's essentially like a deep shadow box mm -hmm. for display, but you need to actually build in it kind of like a ship in a bottle. Exactly, and it'd be really difficult to get to access to paint and put things in there. So the top comes off and the entire thing separates just like that. Yeah. Yeah, so you build, you build your scene in here and on this wall and then the two pieces just nest together like that. It's hard to do from behind. All right, there we go. Um, yeah. And no big, no piece here is larger than like a 12 by 12 sheet. Um, so if you have a standard, you know, like a 12 by 20 style Glowforge yep. bed for laser cutting, you could cut your own. Yeah, absolutely. And the file for this base version, I think we'll make that available so people can download it and can riff on it and cut their own and build one at home. That is so cool. I mean, that's the whole point of this. We know we didn't come up with the idea of the book nook, but we want to give this as an opportunity for you out there, if you have access to a laser cutter, to then run with this using this as a canvas. Yeah, exactly. All right, but that's not where you stopped. So I started customizing. I took that basic form of the book with the spines in the front and I thought about what scene would lend itself well to this format of like a narrow space that you're looking down. And the first thing that came to mind was actually um, something that I that I was really into growing up which is that uh, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Mm -hmm. So I was really into that and I thought that the scene where uh, Lucy's going into the wardrobe and it starts off as coats and yeah. then suddenly she's in a snow scene and there's a lamppost which is like the the gateway kind of into, into Narnia. So I created this little scene that is basically a wardrobe. Um, so this is the this is the sort of mock-up cardstock, figuring out how everything was going to work in in space dimensionally um, and the sizes that everything needed to be. Uh, from there, I made. Wow! This oh my goodness! So this is this is the little wardrobe, 
And Whoa. yeah. <laughs> um, so there's now an entry, an actual entry, so you can interact with it. So you open, you open these little doors and you can kind of go into the depth of the scene. Wow, so doors aren't a part of the original design. You could, of course, use these uh, molding pieces to look like mm -hmm. books, but you're just, you design a hinge here uh, for the top that would work as a hinge for the door here. Yep, yeah, so this is um, embedded into the top and bottom pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a simple hinge mechanism and basically the doors lock into those. Um, the doors also activate a switch which turns on and off your lighting. So I built a, a little micro switch into it and once the door closes, it turns off the lights inside. Right, right. And then also the sides are adorned with more laser cut pieces. So if you want to display it not on a bookshelf, right. it still has that aesthetic as a diorama. Right, it can be a standalone piece, um, which actually would be kind of a shame to hide these in yeah. a bookshelf. But so this is this is the latest like version of it. But I did cut us a full kit that we can build. So I, I have all the flat I would love pack. that. Can we put one together? Because these are something that you're gonna be offering for people if they want this specific design version of a book nook. Yeah, let's, right. let's build one. All right. So that whole box starts off as a set of flat pack pieces uh, that are laser cut just like this. So we can start popping these out and sanding off the tabs and begin putting it together. Perfect. All right, I'll take this one and start. Noticing things here. What is this, Jen? What are these pieces? Those are little wire holders. So as you start wiring your electronics through, they're basically little clips and you can glue them into the ceiling or into the walls to hold all your wiring in place. It's making use of every piece of the wood. Use every part of the animal. Um, I also, you'll find some battery holders and something to hold our uh, power block. They're all engineered to fit the specific kit uh, that will come with the laser cut pieces. Something super cool here, Jen, is that you've also cut these using different types of ply. Yeah, we went with a couple different finishes just to give it a little bit more color and dimension. And we have here is a cherry, this is a walnut, and then the, the main construction and some of the lighter pieces are a Baltic birch. I mean, the contrast you get from walnut to birch is great, but also uh, we're using some of the sheets we got, for example, Glowforge, which mm -hmm. already have the protective covering on right. there so you don't get scorch marks, uh, but you've decided even to leave some of that on because yeah. you get extra texture and dimensionality with that. Yeah, you get some color and some striping. It looks, looks cool. I like stripes. So for these walnut pieces, I think I'm actually going to oil the whole surface before I pop it out. That way I don't have to worry about doing them individually. Uh, and I'm just going to use a little bit of this cutting board oil, but you could use any type of wax or a clear finish. You could even stain it if you wanted to. Uh, so I'm just going to put this onto a rag and the oil will bring out the wood grain and also give it a nice soft sheen. It's such a big difference. I know. It, yeah. Wow. And like you could even get more, you could make it darker and add even more of the grain the more layers of oil you put on because the wood, especially when it's raw, it sort of drinks. Um, drinks the first couple layers that you put on. But it really brings out that beautiful walnut.
we'll start out by building the structural pieces first. So some of them are, are double thick. Um, we'll glue those together and then we can start putting in walls and then do the outer layers. Perfect. So this is kind of crucial because everything is such a snug fit that all of your alignments are spot on. So I'm gonna apply glue and then press on all four faces and make sure that everything stays aligned. And you only have a couple seconds of working time with the CA glue, even without the activator. So glue and then really quickly turn and press. And then I've got a nice sharp alignment. So one cool little feature that I made is this lamppost has an LED inside mm -hmm. and the back has this cutout that perfectly matches the shape of the five millimeter LED. So you can just pop that right in there and then run the wires on the back. a channel and a bracket. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And this one actually has three layers. So uh, to create the illusion of the snow being on top, uh, that one goes behind and then the walnut layer is the visible lamppost and then your snow layer goes on top. Uh, this way. This way? Yes. Looking good. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's really good. I'm excited to see it in the different tones of a wood because it looks less like a prototype and more like a finished product. Yep, yep. yep. These door handles. You they're, were telling me, what are they? They're just rivets. They're solid rivets. They're the perfect little size and shape for door handles. So cool. And we're ready to put the whole thing together. Let's do it. All right, so I think first strategy would be to join my piece with your side. So that's the front there, and that's the front there. Let me tuck these little wires in over here. Oh, they're gonna wanna keep popping out. Here it's snapping into place. Almost. There's one tab. There we go. Ha! <laughs> Let's just pop that hinge in. Does it fit? Yes! Jen, this looks so good. I am really, really excited about how it came out. I had no idea that it was gonna to get to this level when I started with the foam core prototype, mm -hmm. but with the lights and the finish panels on the outside, ah, it's so it's, I'm really proud of it. And really fun to put together too. Uh, I think in the process of putting it together, you were also learning you know, exactly how to 
give instructions for people to put it together themselves, right? Like it's a whole learning process. Yeah, building something once for yourself and hiding your crimes is a totally different endeavor than making something that's replicatable and can be assembled by people at home in, in mass. And that's exactly what you'll be able to do with this because we mentioned earlier the plans for the basic version of the book nook by you uh, is gonna be available. There's gonna be a link below, but if you want to build this version of it, there will be plans on your Etsy as well as uh, this as a flat pack kit. Yep, you can buy all the pieces for this pre-laser cut with all the lights and the electronics, and that'll be available as well as, like you said, the digital files if you have your own laser cutter that you can download. Well, let's show people the inside as well, behind Check these beautiful out. doors. I really love the multi-tone finish that we chose here with the walnut and the birch. Um, this is uh, one implementation of it. I'm sure you have many other thoughts about ways to uh, even decorate this one or other versions. Yeah, I have ideas for other types of kits we could do too. So we'll see, we'll see what comes of that. I think we're gonna have a lot more of these type of projects on the site. We'd love to for people out there to download the files and share with us yes, please your share. own builds of book nooks or you know whether it's from this design or something of your own creation. It's something we're totally obsessed with. Um, thank you out there for watching and then Jen, thank you so much for building this. Oh, it's so much fun. And sharing with the world.